This is Pierre Sabac unlocking the keys to the mysteries. Um, now, I should actually mention to my audience that one of the reasons why I'm creating this um, series is to actually advertise my book, Holographic Culture. Um, I also want to um, go into detail about what the book actually talks about, a catered book, and it deals both with um, symbolism and the symbolic language of, of symbols and how symbols um, are utilized within the ancient world. Um, but it also has a lot of new terminology, such as scaphology, which is the study of angelic vessels um, or, or angelic ships. Um, this, I argue, is a classified tradition and comes from a classical teaching, classis being a naval fleet. Uh, the naval fleet in this respect is the angelic host. So these are some of the areas which I'm going to be covering over the course of this series. Um, now today I'm going to be talking about the Aeon and the Aeon itself is very interesting. Uh, we find uh, reference to the Aeon um, within uh, Gnostic teaching. So first of all we'll have a look at what this word actually means. Now the word Aeon in, in Greek means age um, and it appears with a Neoplatonic philosophy um, and also um, Platonic philosophy also. Um, it's a very important um, idea within Gnosticism. Now the idea of the Aeon is that this is a power which existed from eternity and it's a type of emanation. So it's an emanation which comes from an original source and this original source um, is the singularity or is the Godhead, um, which is the representation or the manifestation of all forms. Um, in, in the modern language, we would refer to this as the expression of the hologram. Okay, so the hologram itself, um, or, or the aeon, can be seen as, as a pattern um, which relates to the hologram. So this power, or the aeon, is a power which exists from eternity. And it's an emanation or a phase of the supreme deity. So this is... Um, it, it's continually throughout, it's, it's outside of time, um, but it also impregnates and creates time. So when we look at this in terms of thermodynamics and the laws of the universe, uh, we can see that there is a uh, perpetual cycle from, um, from order, which is the cosmos, and we can view this as being ultimate reality to a gradual decline, and this is known as entropy. Um, so we see that there's a gradual decline or a movement towards disorder. Now, in a Gnostic sense, the projection of the mind into matter. So when the, um, when the fragment of God is distilled and is represented in time, so the infinite then becomes finite, and this is the projection of the mind into matter. Obviously, matter then is subject to the laws of decay and um, decay, and subject to the thermodynamics, um, w which in this respect would be entropy. Now, in quantum physics, um, this actually refers to the split between the waveform and the particle. Um, so we can see then that the um, we have potentiality. In, in Platonic philosophy, potentiality is um, the universal form. And the universal form, which is, let's say, for example, a, hu a human being or an animal, um, is then represented. So this would be the implicated and the explicated order. So the waveform or the particle is existential to the spirit and it's an embodiment within form. And now I refer to this as the soul pattern. So the manifestation of the aeon, which can be understood as a spirit, can also be understood as the hologram, or it can also be understood as the soul pattern. Now the soul pattern itself can be projected um, throughout time. So for example, when we view reincarnation, um, reincarnation itself can be a, a misnomer because in some respects the soul pattern, when you die, you go into what is the spiritual realm or the imaginal, re imaginal realm, as I refer to this. Uh, this would be the dream time. But the soul pattern can emerge, and it can emerge both into the past or into the future. Or it can also go back into the past in a different dimension. So you could be incarnated into a better version of the past or a better version of the future. So the soul pattern is the emanation of the, of the spirit which is the implicated order, and how that spirit is represented physically in time. But as we said before, because time doesn't exist, then the soul pattern is not subject to the laws of time. And therefore, the soul pattern can be man manifested at any different stage within time. So 
within this, then, there is the macro level, which is the creation of the aeon, which is the emanation. And this is really uh, within the holographic universe or the idea of the holographic universe. We can see that the representation of the concentric circle or the aeon, which as we said was an emanation, can be understood really to be an interference pattern, which is the hologram. This, as we said, is the implicated order uh, within platonic thinking. Uh, this, is the, um, uh, this is the universal form which is the implicated order. Now, the externalization of the form is the explicated order, that which is expressed, um, that which is particularized if we're using platonic vocabulary. So we can, if we were to summarize this, we would say that the implicit alludes to the ulterior design, which is a universal form within platonic thinking. Now, the universal form is the idea which lies behind the hologram which is the implicated order. And this then is materialized into time and space, which is the basis of reality. Okay, so I think that um, sums up the Aeon. Uh, I'd just like to thank you for listening. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Um, let's make a better world. Thank you very much.